Hey everybody, I want to show you how to use layers properly and how to set it up quickly because there's nothing worse than working on a project you've inherited and it's just a complete mess. Layers in D5, super easy. So let's get straight into it. So right over here, this is the layer area of the UI in D5. By default, all the objects are on default layer. And you can see here in my outliner, I've got hundreds of different assets. And if I were to turn this off, everything goes away. So the problem is it's not really separated correctly. And I don't have an easy way to toggle things on and off. Cause if you don't know this yet, layers are actually synced to your scene. So you can have things on and off in different scenes. This is good for design options or you just hiding things that shouldn't be there that are creating, you know, weird reflections or you want to turn lights off. It can be really handy. So I want to show you some of the layer types that I use and how to organize it quickly. So check this out. If you go over here and you hit add layer, this will simply add a layer. And generally speaking, I have a layer for lights. So now the problem is, and I hear this a lot, it's like, oh, I was too busy to set up my layers. Well, D5 makes it really easy for you. All you have to do is after you've like done your scene or you've worked on it for a little bit, just go right here to filter and switch to whatever asset you need. So this is lights, right? So let me click lights. And now I can just shift select so I'm holding down shift, I click the bottom, and now I have all these lights selected. I can confirm which layer it's on by looking at the top right here. If I click this, I can now switch it to lights. So now, if I'm doing a night rendering, I probably want these on. If I'm doing a day rendering, I can probably keep them off. But now they're tied to a visibility state with my layer, and then I could just tie it to the scene. It makes it really handy. So I use lights a lot. The other one I'll use is architecture. So I usually rename default to architecture and this just represents, you know, could be the house, it could be the exterior. You know, that's another thing. The layer conventions I give you here, it's going to vary from project to project. If you're just dealing with an interior project, then I'm just talking about the interior shell. If we're talking about like an aerial master plan, you know, it's your project. Do what you do with that. Context could be another layer, right? There's so many different things. The other thing I'll do is vegetation. And vegetation is a good example of why you want it on a layer. So if you haven't realized this yet, trees are really expensive performance wise. They contain a lot of textures, a lot of polygon, and it slows down D5. What you could do is put this all on a layer and then turn it off while you're working. And then I'll give you a little performance boost, right? So the thing with vegetation, and people often forget this, it actually comes in different flavors in the filter set. So if you look here, we've got nature, then we've got, you know, decal, give or take, you know, maybe the leaves, right? But there's also scatter, okay? So just keep in mind that you're going to have to activate a bunch of these in order to put it on the correct layer. You could also just have a scatter layer. Again, you do whatever you want. So I'm gonna go to nature, and now I'm going to click the first one, scroll down all the way to the bottom, shift click again, that's all selected. And then I switch to vegetation. So now that you can see, we've got all the vegetation on its own layer. I can toggle it on and off, but you'll notice that these guys have not moved over. The reason that is, like I was saying earlier, they live under scatter right here. So you have to be careful when you select these. So don't shift click, do it one at a time. Otherwise it may trigger a crash because it's selecting a lot of data. So you could just go here and switch it to vegetation, or if you want, make a new layer for scatter. So I'm gonna move that over and I'll do that later. Put that vegetation later and we'll do the same thing here. So now they're all here, but again, multiple steps there. So not the end of the world. So usually I do the architecture, lights, vegetation. The other one is entourage. Now entourage can be like people and cars. So I'll grab these types of people. The thing you have to watch out here is it's the same situation as the vegetation where you're going to be pulling from two different categories, character and vehicle. So if I go to character, I'll see the couple here. That makes sense. Move them to entourage. And now if I switch it to vehicle, I should see the SUV right here. Now I can turn that off as a sanity check and there we go. So a little cool thing I want to point out is, you know, on the lights layer here, I've got all these different lights. Let's say for example, I just wanted to move them to a different layer. If you right click, you can do select all objects and then you can change the layer. 
which is handy if you need to move anything over. Because if I were to delete this, I can't because I have things on it, right? So if you need to delete a layer, nothing can be on it. Otherwise, it'll also delete the objects, which isn't great. So little little tip there. The other layer I'll do, and I don't do this for every single project, but sometimes I'll include a section plane. And this is really useful for scenes. So watch this. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to add a section cube just so it's really, really visible. What's going on? Okay. And I'm going to put this on section. And I know it's on section because on the top right, it says section, but I also had it as the default layer. Anything that's checkboxed or checkmarked here will automatically place assets there. Okay, so this is the, the trick with scenes. So if I were to go over here and just make a new scene, right? By default, I have it on, which, you know, may be good or bad. So I'm gonna make another one. And I'm gonna say section on, and then I'm gonna call this one section off. Because D5 remembers layer states for scene states, if I turn this off and then I sync this, I now have a on and an off. This is useful if you're working on the interior and you need to just like easily see like a dollhouse view, like get down in there and edit things. That's what I use it for. So check this out. I'll put this in here. And there we go. So now I'm able to just fly in here and I can place things and it's not an issue. So that's like a nice little editing hack. And while I'm here, make sure you turn on affected by light. It makes it a little bit easier because it's like the uh, the model has been removed. So that's what this guy is. So we've got that. So it'll remember not only position, but also sections on and off. So some other layers I typically add. And again, this is all preference. I can do one for decals as a common one. I can also do one for just models. So models differ from like regular assets as in their, their own imported things. So if I go over to model, like this was an imported model. So this, because it's the architecture, it's the actual project, I have it on its own layer, but there are other things that I have imported, right? This is another SketchUp model, and this is just a table. This, I could put it on a model layer, or if I wanna be specific, I could create a furniture layer. So again, same project process, I do furniture and move it there. Again, a lot of this, and I know I keep repeating myself is really going to be based on your own workflow, but I think it's important that you get in the habit of just like putting things on the right layer. So if anyone inherits your project or is working with you, they're not pulling their hair out because everything's such a mess it, because that's, that's just the worst. It, it's so frustrating when you're trying to like work and it's, it's not clean. You can see how quick this is taking us to just go in there, shift click, and then just move it to the right layer. Not difficult at all. So anyways, that's it for this one. I just wanted to put that tip out there because I, I feel like too many people are working without layers and I just think it's, it's a little wild. I think the other thing you should just know is you can lock it, lock different layers. And this is good if you don't, if you don't trust the people you're working with and you don't want them to mess up anything, if you just lock anything, like for example, I locked the entourage, none of this is selectable. So that's a little trick there. Anyways, as always, if you have a question, drop it in the comments, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.